What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Now I'm right in the middle of making a video for Aux Beam. They sent me a bunch of their products to show you guys. These are their little pod lights and what I'd like to do is I'd like to set them up as ditch lights, something right about there. The only problem with that is that I don't have any ditch light brackets for a third gen 4Runner and I also don't have any time to order them. So I'm gonna do what I do best and I'm gonna make my own version. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to build some ditch light brackets for a third gen 4Runner. Now I know that's a niche topic to do a video on, but I hope you stick around, watch to the end of this video, you might learn something. Also, be sure to hit like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Now I've already built a couple brackets just to see what works. This is a little bracket that I made that fits underneath this fender right here. It goes underneath the hinge for the hood. This worked pretty good, it was just a little bit flimsy, um, so I wanted to try out a different design. So I came up with this guy right here, which is what we're going to be building today. It actually mounts underneath the hood, it attaches to the, the hinge on the underside of the hood itself, and it just slips right in so you don't have to detach anything, you just loosen up the two screws that are under the hood and it just bolts right up. So usually when I'm doing a build like this, it typically starts out using just some wire like this. This is just some wire I got at Lowe's. It's kind of like coat hanger wire, but just a little bit more malleable. It bends pretty easily. But uh, yeah, I use something like this, get it into a general shape, and then it gives you a good idea of the form factor that you're gonna be going for, and uh, tells you kind of where all your bends are. And then I go from that to a thinner piece of metal that's cheap, easy to bend, something like that. And then once I have this just right, I'll move up to my final thickness, which is uh, gonna be much beefier. So yeah, let's get into the shop and show you how we're gonna build these little ditch light brackets. Let's get to it. We're gonna start this build with a single piece of one inch flat bar. It's 3 16th inch thick. I wouldn't go any thinner than that, just not gonna be sturdy enough. So we have a piece here that's about three feet long. We're gonna cut this down. We need two pieces that are exactly 12 and 3 quarter inches. So let's get that cut. All right, I've made it just about as easy as I can make it for anybody that's wanting to make a set of these for their third gen. But what we have, we got the bottom marked B for bottom, T for top. Everything is measured off the bottom edge here. So starting at the bottom, one inch up, we have the first mounting location that corresponds over here. The next one is at four and an eighth or so. The, the most important thing is that these are eight centimeters apart because this fits the forerunner hinge. And then from the bottom, starting on the right side, bottom to this first little mark, you can barely see it, is seven and an eighth inch. We go up, nine and five eighths, 11 and five sixteenths is the third mark on the right side, not including these guys over here. And then on the left side, six and a half, nine and five eighths, and 11 and one sixteenth. Now the reason some of these are different numbers is because we're gonna connect the dots here and here, this one's gonna go straight across, and this, this is gonna be another diagonal here. And these are gonna be some of these bends right here. Slanted bend here, this straight bend, and then another slanted, slightly slanted bend right here. And I know this one works. So you'll just do the exact opposite that you're doing on the right side for the left side. Pretty simple stuff. So yeah, now I'm gonna connect these dots here, and then we're gonna make some cuts so that we can bend this to the shape that we need it. All right, now that we have our lines marked, I'm gonna be using the angle grinder. I'm not cutting all the way through these, I'm just cutting a groove on each mark, and, and that way we'll be able to bend this to the shape that we need first before we can uh, weld it all up. So don't cut all the way through it. Now I'm switching to a grinding wheel to make these wider. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drill out the holes for the mounting locations. I'm gonna use a step bit for this. I'll probably go up to almost half of an inch, seven sixteenths or so. We're working 
working on the driver side bracket, so we need to cut out the right side of these holes here. So here and here. And then that'll look just like that. All right, this is our bracket so far. No bends yet. This bracket is gonna mount right under here under these two 12 millimeter bolts. But to get it in place, we first need to bend on our first two marks here and here so that we can clear the cowl and the windshield and uh, test fit this and figure out where the rest of our bends need to be. That's why it's really good to start off with like a really thin uh, piece of steel to begin with and then you can transfer all your bends over to the final piece. But uh, yeah, like I said, you can't really mess this up. We're just gonna bend here and here until that clears and then we're gonna mount it in place and then you can kind of figure out where the rest of your bends need to be at. So, uh, so let me show you how I'm gonna do that. All right, for this first bend, we're not bending very much. It's about 30 to 35 degrees if you have the angle finder. But you really just need to go back and forth between the vehicle until you figure out what, the, what clears. That might have been a little too much actually. Yeah, not much at all. All right, now to get our bracket temporarily installed, we're just gonna feed it through the front like this. Pretty simple, just like that. All right, this looks pretty good. I wanna bend right here to get this a little bit more vertical. And then this last bend right here will basically just be a 90 to flat, straight, straight down, so that our ditch light has a you know flat surface to mount to. The reason for that first angled bend down here that you can't see is to match this edge here and then also the curve of the cowl itself. It is touching the plastic, but it's not affecting anything. It's barely, it's barely touching right there, so. We'll make this bend here, we'll fold this over here, and then we'll see how it looks. And then for this last one, I'm probably gonna have to use the hammer to get it going. Just not much there to make that bend. All right, I'm gonna mount it back up to the vehicle and See how this looks. All right, that actually looks really good. I don't think I'm gonna change anything. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and weld that up. Nice and flat on top. Might have a little bit of a lean to it, but I think that's gonna be perfect. I'm happy with that. Yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing welded up and then we'll drill a hole for our ditch light. All right, let's get our bracket welded up. Today I'm gonna to be using the TIG 250P from Yes Welder. The only reason I'm using a TIG machine is because uh, that's what I'm learning right now. I've explained this in my previous videos, but I'm just making myself use my TIG machine just to hone those skills. You can definitely use a MIG welder for this. Uh, it's pretty easy to weld up, so let's get it done. All right, there we go. Not my best TIG welds, but this will do just fine. I'm gonna put it back on the vehicle, make sure nothing moved after welding it. Then we'll do some final touches and get it painted. All right, this is final fitment check. Thankfully nothing really moved after I welded it. Everything's nice and flat. Looks good. Now we're gonna do the final touches. Gotta drill a hole right here for our ditch light and get everything painted. All right, now for the passenger side bracket, I'm gonna switch over to my MIG setup, which this is the MIG 205 DS from Yes Welder. It's a fantastic MIG welder if you're interested. Uh, I just wanna make sure that you can get into all these you know, corners with both the MIG and the TIG. So let's get this welded up. Here it goes. Woo, that was a little hot. 
kind of to turn it down just a hair. That was a lot better. Man, MIG welding is so much easier than TIG welding. I'm just gonna throw that out there. That was so easy to do on this MIG welder. All right, now I need to drill a hole in this top little mounting tab to mount our ditch light. You could have done this earlier when this was flat and it would have been a little easier, but oh well. Just gonna kind of eyeball this one. Drop my bolt in, make sure that fits, perfect. All right, I'm gonna put the final touches on this guy before paint. In my opinion, the thing to take your project from DIY to more professional looking is rounded corners, especially with metal work. So we're gonna put this on my upside down belt sander, which I use all the time, absolutely love it. If you're not using a sander somewhere in your project, you're probably doing it wrong. So let's knock off these corners. All right, this looks way better. You see what I mean? Just looks so much more finished. I'm gonna go ahead and finish building the passenger side bracket and then we'll get these guys painted up and on the vehicle. All right, here are two brackets, basically exactly the same. I think they look really good. Now to finish them off, I'm gonna hit them with a little self etched primer. This is my favorite primer for bare steel. I'm still gonna scuff the surface a little bit with some sandpaper. And then after primer, I'm gonna use some of this high performance enamel in flat black. And uh, we can get these things installed. All right, here's the final product. I think this looks really good. Let's get these guys installed on the vehicle for the last time and install the lights. I think this looks really good. There's no interference when they open the hood. These guys are super solid. One of my previous versions if you touched it, it would just sit there and vibrate for a while. I definitely didn't want that. And these seem to be really solid. Someone in my previous video commented and said, couldn't you just mount up the bracket on top of the hinge instead of underneath the hinge? That way there's less of a gap between your hood and your fender. I mean, like, don't you think I would have thought of that? I mean, I'm pretty much perfect. I didn't think of that. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Crap. All right, there you have it. The bracket fits on both ways, no problem. Not really sure why I didn't think of that to begin with. Although I do think it looks a little bit cleaner if it's underneath the hinge. And there's really not much of a gap issue between the hood and the fender to speak of. So yeah, gotta love the YouTube comment section to teach you things sometimes. Uh, anyway, hope y'all enjoyed this project. Hope you learned something even if you didn't need uh, ditch light brackets. Actually, leave me a comment below if you had no need for ditch light brackets, you don't own a third gen, but you stayed till the end of this video. I will love that comment so hard. Actually, I'll pin you at the top. There you go. Hope y'all enjoyed this one. We'll see you guys in the next video.